I'm a maths uh, graduate student and I've been using the Zephyr Kasten method for the past six months or so and I thought I'd make a video to explain my thoughts on using the Zephyr Kasten method. Um, so the Zephyr Kasten method is uh, where you basically want to create a network of nodes. Um, so you, you write kind of short notes that express, say, one um, key idea and then you have some other some other note who will uh, maybe reference uh, your original note. And so over time you, you end up making a big network of notes. So I think I've made uh, 300 notes or so in the, in the first six months of using the Zeta testing. Okay, so in this video I'm going to talk about how I actually write notes and kind of my principles when uh, writing notes. Um, then I'll talk about how it, how using the Zettelkasten really changes your approach to learning. And then I'll finish by talking about um, how this method kind of relates to some kind of software engineering principles that I think is quite interesting. Okay, so how do I actually write notes? Um, and so I think maths uh, kind of tends itself to writing notes in the Zettelkasten really well. So if you read a paper, and typically it'll, it'll say something like definition. So reading, I don't know, kind of the main body of a paper will have, say, definitions and then define a load of things, uh, and then maybe some lemmas. And then etc. Um, and so really for my kind of atomic notes what I the main idea is to just split off these uh, kind of uh, propositions and lemmas and turn them into say standalone notes. Um, so I tend to try and keep only say one definition or one proposition uh, per note, but then maybe sometimes with some concepts there'll be two definitions that are so closely linked that you'll always want to include both of them. So in that case, I'll put both the definitions in the same note, um, but generally try and uh, stick to this. Then also um, for the kind of propositions that I want to understand very well, I'll include the proofs. Um, and I'll really try and make these proofs very concise, um, so maybe a couple of sentences, um, and then if I need more, then I'll make another note, and then so say use this as a lemma. So I'll need to split up the the proposition if I can't make a very concise proof. I mean, most of the time for proofs, you can really summarize the the key ideas in a few sentences, but then the the kind of detail is is what makes some proofs very long and then so uh, to get around this I'll just make a new note and kind of delegate the and kind of delegate the the details of the proof to, to other notes um, and this is kind of what you do when you like actually learn things yeah so the benefits of doing this is that for maths at least is that so if these are very standalone notes then it means that when you want to reference something, basically everything that, it, that you need is contained in the notes, or it's, it says exactly where the, the kind of prerequisite information is that you need to understand the content of the notes. So a problem with textbooks and lecture notes perhaps is that the notes are written in a very linear way, and sometimes it's not clear, say, if you look like halfway through the notes, um, there's maybe some statement here that depends upon some tiny sentence, say, earlier on. And so if you've been attending the lectures, then yeah, you'll be able to remember that. But then six months later, a year later, when you go back, you want to understand one sentence, and then you 
really need to kind of trawl your way back through the notes to understand what the notes are talking about. But very frequently with papers this happens where there'll be some symbol or something that's defined somewhere earlier on in the in the paper and I don't know it maybe takes a good five minutes or so just to find where this symbol is defined um, and so the idea of the zettelkasten is really to, to stop this uh, problem and have everything kind of either defined in the note or there's a very clear link to where the information is defined. So for software, I've actually made some, uh, I've actually written some software that allows me to write my notes in LaTeX, uh, so, but it doesn't really matter um, how you use, what software you use, it's really just, as long as it's sufficiently easy to write the notes, then yeah, any method is fine. So now uh, I'll talk about how it's changed my approach to to learning new things. So before um, I started using the Zettelkasten method, I think my approach to reading papers was, oh, I should really try and understand this paper kind of fully and get a good grasp of what it's talking about. Um, so that I then kind of absorb the information and then when I'm at some point in the future when I want to use this, I'll be able to say, oh, I understand this paper, they use this technique. And right, let's try and apply that here, or let's try and do something here. Well, I think what the Zettelkasten does is it really reverses that. So you have your kind of network of notes. And so this is your kind of, almost your frame of mind or the way that you think about things is represented in the Zettelkasten. And then when you're reading a paper, you really want to read it and find kind of bits of it that you then want to incorporate into your Zettelkasten. And so you really want to be thinking about, well, how does this paper relate to the ideas that I already have and the ideas that I've already written down in the Zettelkasten? And this just makes um, kind of reading papers and things a lot less daunting because you don't want to kind of completely understand the material. You really just say, oh, is there anything interesting here that I can use? And I think really doing it this way is, um, yeah, a much more effective way of uh, learning mathematics or making, you know, making some progress on some mathematics. I think it's probably kind of unfeasible to uh, really understand every paper that you read. Um, but using the Zettelkasten means that every paper that you read, you kind of, uh, you're looking for ways to incorporate this information into what you already know. Yeah. Uh, so finally, I'm going to talk about uh, software engineering principles. And the Zettelkasten. So, as I've said, I kind of write um, each of my notes is basically, say, like one key idea, so say a theorem uh, with its proof. And so I kind of imagine these theorems or propositions, each in their own note, as kind of like um, functions in software. or programming code or whatever. So for functions you have, say in Python it'd be written like def f, and it would take a load of inputs, and then it's gonna return some output. And with um, the Zettelkasten notes, you're taking, you're really kind of taking assumptions and definitions as your input. or say axioms basically. And then you're 
giving out some kind of non-trivial uh, implications of these assumptions. Uh, and so with uh, software, this kind of uh, design principles that you uh, deploy in order to write good um, code that's kind of reusable and uh, error-free. And I think an interesting thing with using the set of casting is that you can kind of, uh, it very closely mirrors um, writing functions in software. And so this means that you can kind of test your maths in a way, in, in kind of a similar way to testing uh, software. And so this means that if you have some, you know, some kind of result that you want to work on, then you can check that each kind of individual part of the result are kind of kind of work by themselves. Um, and it's very easy to see if this isn't the case because either you won't have a note and so you won't be able to say write a short proof and reference some other note, or that you, you maybe do have a note for a result that you want to prove but you can just see that the proof isn't very good. Yeah, this is very similar to software where you can maybe see that the code isn't written very nicely or it's very difficult to read. And, I, yeah. and so I think when developing new bits of maths, uh, kind of thinking about the maths in this way is probably very valuable. Um, yeah. So these have been my, my thoughts on the, the set of casting. Uh, I'll probably make some more videos um, similar to this, um, and I've also been making some videos about the uh, software that I've been using to, to write the, the set of custom, so I don't know, maybe subscribe if you're interested. <laughs>